Hello and welcome to vlog number 109. This week I'm going to talk about risk factors for Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is an incurable progressive neurological condition and the second most common neurodegenerative disease after Alzheimer's. Aside from hereditary Parkinson's, it is not known exactly what causes the condition, but researchers have been able to identify certain characteristics which make individuals more at risk of developing it. And more of these characteristics are being unearthed as time goes by. Recently it was identified that you have a decreased risk of developing PD if you have had your appendix removed. It isn't recommended that you have an appendectomy in order to dodge Parkinson's though. It's just a statistic that may eventually provide some insight into how or why the condition develops. The same applies to the majority of the characteristics that have been determined by researchers. These are not bullets that can be dodged, they are merely cold statistics that may needlessly worry some, but I have an interest insofar as my paternal grandmother had PD, and so did my mother, and I'd like to know the risk factors of my children going on to develop it. So, what are the risk factors? Are they all undodgeable bullets? And, if not, what can be done to decrease the likelihood of getting Parkinson's? Trauma to the head, neck and upper spine have been cited by a number of studies as increasing a person's risk of developing PD. Gender is a risk factor, and a variety of studies show that men are up to twice as likely to develop PD as women. The reasons for this are not known, but theories include that women benefit from the protective effect of oestrogen. Men suffer more minor head trauma than women, and men tend to be exposed to more occupational toxins. Age is something else you cannot dodge. The risk increases with age, with approximately 1% of the population affected over the age of 60, and around 5% over the age of 85. Only about 5% of people with Parkinson's develop the condition prior to the age of 60. Genetic factors. If you have a close relative with PD, then you are slightly more at risk of developing it. The Parkinson's Foundation estimates that 10 to 15 percent of cases are due to hereditary factors, with a small percentage of people more at risk due to gene mutations. Some people who have a family history of PD opt to undergo genetic testing. However, it should be appreciated that some of those with genetic mutations do not go on to develop Parkinson's. My neurologist told me that PD is likely to be triggered by a combination of genetic and environmental factors, and there is evidence that certain toxins can increase the chances of developing it. These toxins include certain pesticides and herbicides used in agriculture, and research suggests that there is a higher incidence of Parkinson's amongst farmers, those who drink well water, and those who live in the countryside. Components of Agent Orange used in the Vietnam War have been linked to PD. It hasn't been proven beyond doubt, but I know that veterans of this conflict who were exposed to Agent Orange and go on to develop PD are automatically eligible for compensation, so that seems like an admission to me. Long-term exposure to certain metals have been linked to Parkinson's, including mercury, lead, aluminium, zinc, iron and copper. I remain convinced that my Parkinson's was triggered by dental metals, including mercury, but my healthcare professionals refuted this and refused to test me for sensitivity to these metals. I paid privately for tests and my private doctor told me that I had the highest readings for mercury sensitivity that she had ever seen. I became aware of the possibility of a sensitivity to dental metals when I was first misdiagnosed with benign essential tremor in the mid-1990s and ensured that my children did not have any dental metals in their mouths. Although I remain concerned that our firstborn, my daughter, received a substantial dose of mercury in the womb. Her mother had extensive dental work performed while she was pregnant, including many mercury amalgam fillings. A number of studies have implicated the industrial solvent trichloroethylene, or TCE, and also exposure to PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, although other studies have not proved a link. Several studies find that ethnicity is also a risk factor, with the highest incidence of PD being found in Hispanics, and the prevalence of PD in whites being double that of the black and Asian communities. Increased risk of Parkinson's has also been associated with consumption of dairy products and a history of melanoma. 
A reduced risk of developing PD has been associated with caffeine consumption, smoking, the use of ibuprofen and other common medications, and aerobic exercise. Several randomised trials are researching whether or not these negative risk factors are neuroprotective and therefore beneficial to people in the early stages of Parkinson's. In the future, it may be possible to administer neuroprotectants in the very early stages of PD, prior to the onset of motor symptoms. Currently though, the only intervention that appears to be justifiable for preventative purposes is physical activity, which is likely to prove beneficial for the prevention of this and a number of other chronic diseases. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have a topic that you'd like me to cover in future vlogs, just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Have a great week. See you next Friday.